Okay, welcome to the, the first webinar of many uh, with Shibumi. Uh, today, what we want to focus on is uh, continuous transformation uh, in 2023. Uh, and what I first wanted to talk about before we get into the solution uh, and a demonstration on how uh, the Shibumi solution can be leveraged for it is a little bit about the why. Uh, why are companies um, forced to continually transform uh, in the current market that we find ourselves? Uh, and, and looking out at all of our customers and our partners and, and how they're um, providing services to their clients, um, there's really four uh, big market trends that we've um, seen uh, gain uh, a lot of momentum uh, in the last you know, couple of years um, and continue through this year. And the first one is the macro headwinds. And, and really what this is, is the, the macroeconomic market that we find ourselves in. Um, uh, and, you know, we've, we've all seen it uh, in some industries like tech. Uh, there's been quite a few layoffs of recent. In other industries like hospitality, uh, they're still facing challenges um, hiring enough. Uh, and, you know, yet others, uh, we see the, um, we, we see uh, inflation um, still, while it's going down, it's still far from the Fed's target of 2%. Uh, so there is a lot of volatility uh, in the market that we're all facing. Uh, and it's, it's forcing us to look for, for automation and digitization uh, across all aspects, you know, all parts and pieces of our business. Um, and you need a solution uh, to help you know, manage that transformation. Um, the other I touched on it uh, around resource constraints. Um, we just were forced to do more with less. Um, there's, there's not enough resources uh, to, to do everything that we want to do, to execute on all of the initiatives uh, that, that we have, have planned for, that we would like to. Uh, so you have to be much smarter about what you pick and choose and invest in. Uh, and having clear visibility uh, into the benefits is, is really necessary uh, to be able to make those, those good decisions. Uh, the need for innovation. This is continuous. This is always the case. Um, but to, you know, to, to win in the market, to beat the com competition, um, having, you know, innovative, op innovative offerings, not only externally to your clients, but also how you operate and run your business um, is, is necessary. Um, and again, you need a, a system, a platform to provide that visibility and understanding uh, into not only how it's, it's operating today, but how you could transform and, and innovate it. Uh, and then finally, ESG. So this is you know, becoming more and more uh, popular, the environmental, social, and governance um, initiatives that we see all of our customers looking at. Um, you know, it's it's no longer just enough uh, to kind of optimize for you know revenue and cost. Uh, there's also other things uh, that that customers or that co companies uh, want to focus on. And ESG it is you know very much a a category uh, with with a lot of uh, focus on it now. And those ESG uh, initiatives, you know, they have clear defined outcomes that you want to hit and achieve. Uh, so it's a, a natural fit uh, that a, a platform like Shibumi uh, would be used in support. So that's a little bit about the why. Why is continuous transformation uh, such a focus uh, for us in, in the coming year? Um, but how? Now, how, how do we do it? How do we support our customers and, and our partners uh, in this journey uh, around continuous transformation? Uh, and it's really this process. We see this time and time again in 100% of the solutions that we go to market with and the implementations uh, at our customer sites. They follow a, a process very much like this. 
maybe not exactly, but very close. Uh, and the first thing uh, that we do all the time is define our outcomes. Uh, what are we trying to achieve uh, by, by starting this journey, by investing all of these, this time and resources? Uh, what, what is the end goal? Uh, once those are defined, then we start to think up uh, ideas. Uh, how can we achieve uh, those outcomes that we'd set for ourselves? You know, typically, by the way, those outcomes are things like, uh, you know, increasing revenue or decreasing costs or adhering to government regulation. You know, there's some big buckets and categories that, that we often see, but the ideas then are, are created, are identified to start to uh, create a backlog uh, that uh, you can use to hit and reach those outcomes that have been set. A, may, a really critical part of the idea is the business case. Uh, how do we know that this set of ideas will, will bring us, will deliver us to, uh, to the outcomes that we had set for ourselves? Well, you define the business case for each of those ideas. Um, these are the, the benefits that we expect to, um, to achieve, the costs uh, that we'll incur as a result of doing it. Uh, and when you add all of those up, um, you start to get a good understanding of, can we hit this outcome that we had set for ourselves? With that, that detailed business case uh, related or tied to each one of the ideas, now we can get really smart with ranking and prioritizing and deciding which of those ideas are the ones that we want to move forward with, we want to invest in, and we want to execute on. Um, then we move into execution, and this is where we're, you know, we're tracking the plan. Uh, what are the milestones? What are the releases? What are the sprints uh, that, that we have to deliver on to achieve those benefits that we have defined uh, within our business case? And then finally, the last piece, how do we do? Let's make sure that uh, those benefits we originally identified in the business case have been realized after we've invested and executed on the initiative. And it never ends, right? It's continuous, continuous transformation. Uh, so we then go back into this cycle uh, and, and uh, forever improve uh, the, the execution of the company. Um, so that's the how. We are a, a technology company and what we have developed uh, in support of all of this and to enable all of our customers to achieve this is uh, at, the, at the lowest level of platform. Uh, this platform powers everything that we do, all the technology uh, that, that we make available to our customers uh, is contained within this platform. All of our existing customers uh, have access to this platform. And at the lowest level, at this the Shibumi Foundation level you see here, that's the platform that, that we use to configure all of our business applications. The solutions that, that our customers use are all running off that single uh, foundation, that single platform. We often use the, the Lego analogy uh, when we're talking about this. Uh, where the Shibumi Foundation layer, that lowest layer, are the individual bricks, uh, the Lego bricks uh, that, that, our, that our development and our engineering team make available to us. And then we use those bricks to construct, to build business applications. And we can, we can configure them, we can snap them together in many different ways. Uh, to produce different business applications to solve different business problems. And, um, and so what you actually use, what all of our customers and our partners use when they're using Shibumi are those business applications. Um, the nice part about this is that configuration layer just sitting above the business application, that is available to all of our customers and partners as well. So if that that um, Lego set that we've snapped together and built uh, within the business application doesn't exactly meet your needs, or there are some 
modifications you'd like to make to it um, to, to fully incorporate your requirements, uh, that's, that's expected. Uh, but we, that happens all the time. And that configuration layer is what allows us to make that last mile uh, modifications and, and, and uh, tweaks. Uh, and then finally, there's the user experience, the end user experience that, that, the, um, that the people use, that the users use when, when they're interacting with Shibumi. Uh, and again, this is controlled through the configuration layer. So we have a lot of, of control over what it looks like, how it behaves, uh, how it's organized, uh, the look and the feel. Uh, we, we have quite a bit of control over that. And our customers even have quite a bit of control over that uh, by leveraging that configuration layer. Uh, and then finally, over on the right side uh, is Shibumi Connect. So you, you may have heard about this uh, recently. This is a somewhat new offering, um, but Shibumi Connect is what allows us to integrate to you know, well over a thousand other applications uh, in, in, in the industry. So, you know, all of this is great on the left-hand side, but inevitably uh, there's other applications that we need to uh, push and pull data to uh, in this process of continuous transformation. And so Shibumi Connect is a, a, an easy way for us uh, to be able to, to connect to those other systems and, and push and pull the data that, that we need to. If we double click on any of the business applications that we make available, uh, really what those are, are modules. And so the modules are the discrete capabilities uh, that, that we make available to our customers. So oftentimes this is kind of referred to as a, as a menu. So when we're starting to work with a, a new client, a new customer, uh, we look at this menu uh, of capabilities and we decide which ones uh, they'll need uh, at, you know, at, for version one uh, of Shibumi internally at their company. And it's usually a subset uh, of these. Uh, we, did, we settle on you know, a, a handful, a half dozen, uh, of, of the modules, of the capabilities that you see in, in the screen now. That's V1. And then typically there's a, um, you know, there's a maturity uh, curve for at the customer where they start to incorporate more and more of our modules uh, and add more and more capability into their solution at, at, their, um, at their company. Many of these modules, just about all of them, all of them actually, uh, relate to each other. Um, so it's very rare, and it actually never, it never happens, that a module is 100% standalone. Um, for instance, resource management is tightly tied to scenario management. Roadmaps is tightly tied to work planning. Um, Business case management is tightly tied to benefit realization. So there's a lot of inner relationships uh, between all of the modules uh, that we make available. Uh, but typically what we do uh, in, a, in an initial implementation is simply turn them off, uh, hide them from um, the, the end user. Uh, so they, they aren't aware that it's there. It simplifies uh, the solution and we are able to focus in on what is the near-term need. Uh, and then we start to expose them uh, as, as we move forward uh, and layer in that additional uh, capability. Uh, it, we're gonna look at a demo in, in just a minute here, and we'll touch on many of these uh, in the demonstration, uh, just to give you an idea of, of what they look like and how they behave. Uh, and of course, this is our baseline. Uh, we have access to that configuration layer to then start to make slight modifications uh, to, to, to really tailor, tailor them to, to your needs. Uh, last thing I wanted to touch on is now the, the people. Uh, we have a, a really heavy focus uh, at Shibumi and, and within all of our solutions around the personas 
who is going to be using this application uh, at our customer sites. In the demo that we're gonna look at here, we're gonna look at a, an EPMO, an Enterprise Program Management Office. Uh, it's, this office is running a bunch of strategic programs for the company. Within those programs are all of the initiatives that are being executed on. Um, and so there are really four, in this example, four big personas uh, that we want to keep in mind and make sure are having a, a simple to use uh, intuitive experience within the application. Um, so the EPMO the members on that left side, you know, they have certain views and screens uh, to, to cater to, to their needs. Uh, what do they need to see and do uh, within the application? Program managers have different ones. Uh, there's different, there's different uh, capabilities that are made available for them to be able to manage their, their various programs. Initiative team members, uh, they have different views uh, to, to make it simple for them to get in, make modifications to one or a couple of initiatives that they are participating in and, and, and get out. And then finally, the executives and the stakeholders, you know, what are some, some of the, the dashboards, the reporting capabilities uh, for them to be able to stay on top of you know the progress and, and status of, of how the, the various programs are, are running. Um, the other thing I just wanted to touch on is EPMO. Uh, this takes many different forms uh, at, our, at our customers. This is just an example of some of the other offices uh, that, that we hear about quite often and, and that we have support for. Uh, and there's even others that, that are out there, but the, the EPMO, um, you know, it, it, it goes by many different names uh, at, at our customers. And this is just a few of those other names that you may have heard or uh, seen. So with that, let's dive into a bit of the demonstration and look at uh, how all of this takes shape uh, inside the, the Shibumi platform. So as I said uh, in the slides, really what we're looking at here is an app. Uh, it's a business application uh, within Shibumi to manage an enterprise PMO. Um, this enterprise PMO is very focused on delivering benefits. And so you see, we, we highlight those benefits um, straight away in the summary screen. You instantly understand uh, how much benefit has been delivered, just over 12 million. And then where are all of the other benefits sitting? For all of the initiatives that are managed within the programs, within the CPMO, um, there is a stage gating process that they all follow. There's governance uh, being enforced. And so that's how we know that just over 12 million in benefit has already been delivered because that set of initiatives have already gone through their entire life cycle and we've delivered on that benefit. But we have a lot of other initiatives that are sitting in the idea phase or the planning phase. And that means that they're in, this benefit is in pipeline. Uh, we haven't yet invested in it and started to execute on it uh, to, to, to realize that benefit for the company. And then yet other is in progress. And that's this third stage of, of execution here where we have invested uh, in those sets of initiatives and we're running them currently. And so we don't get this benefit yet uh, it's it's still being uh, executed on, um, but over time, much of this benefit in progress will move into delivered because those initiatives are done. Whatever they were supposed to deliver on, you know, we're starting to um, realize and and get the the benefit that that was identified there. And so you'll see these charts many times over and over again um, uh, over time and sliced by stage, uh, life cycle stage, where are we at uh, with the benefits that have been identified? And if we think about continuous transformation, you know, this, 
this over time filling up the pipeline and executing on it and and running through that that process uh, that we saw on uh, early in the slide um, this this is how it starts to take shape and, and take form uh, within the application. There's lots of other tabs uh, for a, a member of the PMO team uh, to, to make use of here. And you can see these other tabs really are just uh, different capabilities, different tools uh, that the somebody in the PMO has uh, to be able to monitor and manage um, you know, all of the programs and all of the initiatives. Uh, contained uh, with within the PMO. Um, you know, I can I can jump into a roadmap, for instance, and I could start to see how all of the programs and work streams and initiatives uh, are are executing. Some timing information, some health information. Um, it's really just taking uh, what we saw in chart form, summarizing benefits. Now we're looking at it in Gantt form, um, summarizing health uh, for all of our initiatives. But ultimately, the initiative, the, this, this line item, these initiatives are where all of this information is, is managed. And at the PMO and the program level, we're, all, we're rolling it up and aggregating it uh, into different views uh, for the, the, the PMO team members and for the program managers. So with that, let's drill into one of these programs uh, and take a look at some of the uh, capabilities we, we provide to, to program managers. So program managers are often tasked with delivering on uh, a set of, of benefits this line here is the target benefit that this program uh, is expected to deliver over time. Um, when we're talking to, again, continuous transformation, that's, that's what this is all about today. Um, in this case, they have to deliver on these outcomes that have been um, set for them, and they have to identify the right set of initiatives that are going to deliver. Uh, for them. And so there's lots of tools and techniques uh, that we make available for these program managers uh, to do that, to effectively do that. Um, one is simply an initiative pipeline, uh, giving them visibility into all of the various initiatives within this program, where they sit uh, within their life cycle, and how well how close are they hitting the targets uh, that have been set? Uh, if I go back to our summary screen, uh, you see this line is our target that we want to hit in the form of benefit. Um, but we've broken this out. Uh, there are four work streams uh, within this program. And really think of a work stream as just a way to organize all of your initiatives. You may have a lot. And rather than having a big long list, uh, we're organizing it into work streams. Uh, in, in this example, we're using those work streams as, as, um, as business units. Um, and, and I've gone to the step of assigning targets to each of those business units, each of those work streams. And so you can see in, in the IT department, we're doing well. Uh, we've identified more than enough benefit to hit the, the IT target that has been set. But in the others, we're not doing, uh, we haven't identified enough benefit yet. So for instance, sales and marketing is 17% short. Uh, we have to come up with some more ideas uh, uh, for sales and marketing to start to fill that gap. Um, and so that's, that's where this, this idea phase uh, really comes in. I can create a, a new initiative, I can tie it to that sales and marketing um, category or work stream that we we're just looking at, and I can add a new idea. Now, these new ideas um, or new initiatives uh, can be populated into Shibumi in a lot of different ways. Uh, one is like this with just a, a simple intake form. We've also have had these intake forms uh, made available to, um, to really everybody at the entire company. You don't even need to be logged into Shibumi 
uh, to be able to submit a new idea into the system. Uh, we, of course, you know, can import uh, from Excel uh, or integrate to other applications uh, to, to populate this set of, of ideas uh, into the application. Um, but as I define this, I can start to make some general um, uh, estimates on what I believe this new idea will deliver for us. Uh, maybe I think it's going to be a, a bit hard. And so uh, I capture my details, I submit it into the system, and my new, new idea is now populated in, um, sitting there in sales and marketing in the idea phase. And if I refresh, I start to see just slightly uh, my sales and marketing um, uh, category uh, change uh, as, a, as a result of adding that new idea in. Um, so this is a you know, great way to, to bring visibility to it, uh, but there are uh, more ways uh, to, to be able to manage all of the uh, initiatives uh, within the program as well. We'll, we'll touch on those uh, in, in a bit here as we go. Uh, the next view I wanted uh, to bring up, though, is, is a roadmap. So we saw this at the Enterprise PMO layer, but now we're seeing it uh, we're getting another level of detail here at, at the program layer. So let me expand all of these. Uh, when we're looking at it from a program perspective, we not only see the work streams and the initiatives, but we also see the major milestones um, that are contained within each one of the initiatives. And in fact, let me just look at the work plan. Uh, we start to see those major milestones. If it is integrated to another system, they would be displayed here as well. So for instance, uh, JIRA uh, is a very common integration uh, that we have. And so we see JIRA epics. Uh, in, in this case, we, we decided to connect to an epic in JIRA. And so we see those displayed here as well. Uh, and we can use them just like we can use any any other milestone being tracked in the system. I can define dependencies between that JIRA epic uh, and something else. Uh, for instance, a, a native you know, Shibumi milestone, um, and I can be able to track it uh, from that perspective. So for program managers, this, this level of detail is, is very valuable uh, to be able to understand you know, how we're doing uh, on executing on the plan. Um, raid logs, this is another module uh, that we saw in that uh, menu uh, in, the, in the slides, but this one's very popular uh, to create a, a raid log that are, these, these items are ultimately captured down at the initiative level, and you can see all of these um, for, for this particular initiative, deploy new logistics. These are all of the, the risks and the issues uh, that have been captured and now we're aggregating them up, uh, aggregating them up. So from a, a program manager's perspective, I have this top-down view of, of all of them. I could get a quick glance of, all right, we have two that are, uh, the impact is high and the probability is high. This is, this is a big problem for us. You know, we really should uh, zero in on those. So for instance, this resource constraint, this issue here, uh, it is high probability, high impact, Maybe I could drill down into that one uh, and, and see uh, this, the status, uh, how we doing on it. Um, another big part of uh, what we do at the program level is resource management. And so this, I think, very much directly ties into some of those market trends uh, that I mentioned in really the first slide as we were getting started. Uh, this this idea that we're we're doing more with less. Uh, there's a lot of great ideas that we've identified in this transformation program, um, and there is a lot of required resources that we need to make use of if we were to move forward and execute on all of these initiatives that we've identified. Uh, but we don't have unlimited resources. Uh, within the organization. And so we're going to need to get pretty smart around 
where all of our resources are being used, when they're being used, and if there's any constraints um, that, that pop up. And, and uh, the, the resource management module does exactly that for us. So I see uh, we have some overutilizations here, program manager and project analyst, or sorry, project manager and project analysts. We don't have enough of them uh, to do all of the work to execute on all of these initiatives that have been identified. Um, so I can peek into them. Let me just uh, drill into project manager uh, for a moment here. And we can see that really starting last year <clears throat> and through to April of this year, uh, we're being overutilized. Uh, there is just not enough uh, people filling this role to do all the work uh, that, that we need them to. Well, we have four people currently. Um, and so if I look down into this, uh, this view, uh, this resource utilization view, I, I see a lot of red here. And this is really um, the, the data behind um, this project manager for uh, allowing us to know how much overage we have. Um, and if you look, you know, December, January, February, March, all of these uh, initiatives are hitting and overlapping during those sets of months. And so that's why we have, there's more than four <laughs> initiatives running simultaneously, and all we have is four people. So that's why we see the overage here. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we can now address this overage. Now that we have visibility into what's going on, sometimes if it's a, if it's a, a fairly simple um, program or an EPMO, I can literally start moving uh, dates right with, within here and start shifting the timing of some of our initiatives. But often that's not, not preferred uh, because we don't wanna start shifting, you know, initiatives that are executing currently, just start shifting dates uh, on people. Uh, we, we had a plan, we're executing the plan, we can't just start uh, making changes all of a sudden. Um, so what is more common is if I go back to the program, we start to run a set of scenarios uh, to be able to address these resource constraints that we've identified. And the scenarios does, do, does even more than that. So it's not only to address resource constraints uh, that, that may have popped up, but it's also to start to identify um, all of those ideas that are coming into the pipeline for this program, all of those new initiative ideas that are being submitted, we need to do something about them. We need to decide to invest in them and execute on them or not. And so uh, scenarios can also be used uh, in that way to decide what to start uh, running, executing on, and what to stop. Maybe there's a set of initiatives that we already approved, but they aren't delivering the benefit that we all expected that they would. And so we may need to stop them and, and start others. And so you create these scenarios and, and really the idea is it's, what is a scenario? It's a set of initiatives that we can pretend are approved. If we approve this set of initiatives, what would that do for the business? How would that deliver on the benefit uh, that we've been tasked uh, with delivering? versus another set. And you can see these two scenarios here, scenario one and two. Scenario one has a certain set of initiatives we've decided to uh, invest and move forward with. We, and it, that will deliver us you know, this amount of benefit, just over 17 million, versus scenario two, which has a different set of initiatives. This one is delivering uh, more benefit. And in this example, in this program, it's really what our focus is on maximizing the benefit that we deliver back to the business. So a higher number is better uh, here. This again is a configuration. It doesn't have to be this financial benefit that uh, is the, the focus. It could be a non-financial benefit. It could be simply 
um, addressing resource constraints and making sure that that we have the resources uh, available to to execute everything. Whatever it is, you would you would see that here, and you would start to understand how these scenarios compare to each other. So let's let's click into one uh, and just look a little bit more at what's included. So really, as I was saying, it's it's what's in and what's out. Um, in this case, we have a lot of initiatives that are out. Uh, this left side are all of the initiatives that we decided to not move forward with. Some are in the idea phase. There's that new uh, new initiative. There's that new idea that we just added. Uh, and we decided not to approve that and, and move it into the included set. We've even decided in some of these to stop doing what we might have already approved previously. So modernized reporting. Uh, this was already approved. It's in execution currently, but we've decided that's it's not doing what we expected it. Let's stop. Let's stop doing that one and start doing some others. And so on the right hand side is what we chose to include. Out of all of those included in initiatives, we'll, we will get um, you know, just over 24 million in benefit, which is much better than the current set of initiatives that are approved and being executed on. Uh, we'll look in a minute at this value score, what this means and how it's created, but this is the, a bigger score is better. So it's, it's a better um, value score than what is already currently uh, approved and being executed on. But there's no chance that we can um, do this work with the resources that we have. Uh, we, we just don't have uh, enough resources available. We're, you know, we're, we're way overutilized. And that's what this number is showing us. So let's scroll down a little bit and see where that is coming from. And I can see it's all about this deploy new logistics technology. This is the problem. Um, there's a lot of overutilization in here. So still within uh, this what if scenario, I can start moving dates around and I can start um, delaying uh, the start date of that particular initiative. And if I delay it for long enough, if I, if I modify my start date, again, all in this what if scenario, I haven't actually modified anything yet. I'm just playing. And, and doing some analysis to figure out uh, how I could address this issue. Um, but if I delay it long enough, those resources become available. And now I, I can execute on this. Um, then I can say, all right, this is great. I like this set of initiatives. Let's approve all of these into the baseline. Let's, let's fund, invest, move forward with this set of initiatives. And this, with a, with a click, this becomes my new baseline uh, that I'm moving forward with. Okay, so last thing I wanted to touch on, um, we've, we've gone through many of those, those modules uh, as, as we've been clicking through, but we still haven't seen an initiative. So again, all of the information that we've looked at up to this point has really been roll up and aggregated information that's coming from that initiative level. So let's drill into one of those uh, and see uh, the data uh, that, is, that is captured and maintained uh, at that layer. Um, and also, if I put our, uh, our persona hat on, you know, we've, we've looked at the EPMO layer that is really catered towards uh, you know, members of, of the EPMO itself. We've looked at the program layer uh, and how program managers um, can leverage the application and, and use the various capabilities to, to manage a program. Now we're in a particular one specific initiative. Uh, and, and this is, you know, an, an initiative team member uh, would be coming in here and managing the, the information uh, related to, to the initiative. So I see we're currently in the execution phase here. Um, and uh, we've, we've, you know, we've gone through idea, we've gone through planning, we've been approved. Uh, there is that stage gating process. Um, so 
people with the correct access rights came in here and, and, and said, yes, this looks like a good idea. I'm going to approve it. And that moves it from stage to stage. Um, so there's, there's that governance piece that has been applied here. Um, and now we're, we're kind of in execution mode. Um, we have, you know, red, yellow, green status indicators on how we're doing. Um, we have charter information around kind of what's the, the team uh, that's going to be executing on this initiative. What are some of the basic pieces of information uh, about the initiative uh, that we want to capture? This, by the way, changes 100% of the time. Uh, all of our customers have, you know, typically different charters, different information that they want to capture in their charter. And so this, this is very uh, frequently modified uh, from this, this simple starting point. Uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on was that score. I mentioned that score uh, when we were looking at a scenario. Where, what is that? Where does it come from? Uh, we use these a lot. Um, the score is, is always calculated uh, based on some information about the initiative. So in this case, this value score is based on how well this initiative is aligned to uh, objectives that have been set for the entire business. So there's a whole set of objectives that um, that you know the, the C level executives may have been have defined and are focused on, and and those objectives have been um, uh, rolled down into the different departments um, and business units of the company, and so there's this view of objectives that we're all kind of rallying around. Deploy new logistics technology. Ideally, it supports those, those objectives in some way or another. And it's actually supporting a lot of them. This whole, this list of objectives are all of the ones that Deploy New Logistics Technology is in support of. As a result of all of this support, we get a score, a value score for this uh, initiative. The higher the score, the better. The higher the score, the better alignment to objectives uh, that, that uh, this initiative delivers. So it's really just a, a shorthand uh, to allow us to quantify that alignment and be able to sort uh, and, and rank initiatives based on it. Complexity is another common one. You know, how complex will, will this initiative be when we go to execute it? This could be everything from simply applying a, a value to a complexity rating that we capture, or it could be a couple um, uh, different things. You know, how, how many milestones uh, are in the work plan? How many people uh, will be required to execute on this? How many dependencies does this initiative have on others? All of those things could be inputs into, you know, a complexity score that gets calculated by the system. Lots of different ways to, to leverage these, but ultimately it's it's all about allowing somebody at the, the program or the EPMO layer, layer to, to uh, simply rank uh, and, and sort uh, using this quantified number. Uh, the next big piece we've talked a lot about today is the, the business case. You know, if you think back to the slides with the, the cycle. Um, the, the business, once we identify the idea, uh, we have to define a business case for that idea. And so that's what we're doing here. Uh, this is the financial business case. What are the benefits, the financial benefits that we expect to get as a result of, of executing on this initiative? And what are the costs uh, that, that uh, we'll, we'll incur? Um, so a combination of these is the cumulative net benefit, the ROI, uh, that we expect to get. Uh, and then we, we start to understand um, over time, what's that, that timeline? What's that benefit timeline um, that, that we should expect uh, as we invest and, and fund uh, this initiative compared to another one? Um, this, by the way, um, 
as we were in the idea and the planning phase of our initiative, we were capturing the expected benefits and costs, what we plan to deliver and, and spend. Um, now that we're in uh, execution, we're now starting to capture the actuals uh, related to this. And in fact, you can see uh, in, this, in this data, the, the gray is the target, what we expected. And this blue is the actual what we're delivering. Um, and we're delivering you know, quite a bit more. And I suspect it's this new widget. Let's peek in. Yeah, so the plan was zero. The actual is a million. So we're, we're very much over delivering uh, on the plan. If we were to simply change this to a thousand and I have admin rights, I can do whatever I want here. Uh, you start to see that their ROI timeline starts to modify uh, as a result of doing that. Uh, so that's that's how that works. Um, a couple other things, a couple last things um, down at the initiative level, uh, the work plan. Uh, we kind of saw this a little bit at the program level when we were looking at the, the work plan there. Um, but this is now specific for this uh, initiative, and we can start to understand, you know, all of the, the milestones and the, the JIRA epics. In this case, we're connected to JIRA. Uh, this is, again, with Shubi, Shibumi Connect um, is, is leveraged quite often here to connect into different execution systems. You know, whether it be PPM applications, agile management, task management. Um, there's often a system already in place at our customer sites uh, that they're happy with to, to manage the execution of these initiatives and projects. And so we would just do an integration there. Um, the only thing we care about in Shibumi is not the entire plan with, you know, the, if you think of an MS project plan with your, you know, thousand lines of milestones and tasks down to the to the um, most detailed. Really what we care about is how that impacts our, our business case, our benefits. So if I jump back to our financials and I see this client data benefit, this is great. This is what we expect to deliver uh, as a result of executing this initiative. But we can't deliver this until this integration module is released and available. If that isn't released, then we don't get this benefit. And so in that case, we really wanted to tie the integration module uh, from um, JIRA into Shibumi to be able to make that dependency connection and to be able to track when, this, when the dates slip on this module, that impacts our benefit timeline, which then gets rolled up and, and is visible uh, in, you know, in, in the entire program and EPMO. So that's a, a critical element, that dependency between your financial benefit and your, you know, the item in your work plan. Okay, so uh, let's see, last thing I wanted to touch on in the demonstration, um, and we're really close on time, so I think that'll be about it, is... Um, uh, and some uh, views for executives and stakeholders. You know, this is all great information as we've been clicking through and looking at all the detail, um, but how do we make kind of a, a simple um, dashboard available for uh, the executives to be able to keep track of you know, how we're doing? Um, continuous transformation, right? They're gonna be looking at this uh, over and over again. There's gonna be a cadence, uh, whether it be, you know, Typically, it's monthly, uh, where you're you're briefing um, a, a set of stakeholders on progress and status. And so we do this in a lot of different ways. Um, integration again is is a way that we can do it. Integrating to BI systems, uh, we have dashboards and reports that uh, you can create natively within Shibumi. We also have this. Um, which we call presentations uh, that we can create natively within Shibumi. And it it's very, it follows some of the, the, the ideas of a PowerPoint uh, where you have a series of slides 
And then the, the content of the slide, the big difference here is the content of the slide is directly connected into uh, the data being managed within Shibumi. Uh, so these slides are evergreen. They're always updated and, and current uh, with the information that is captured within them because it's a, it's a live connection uh, to the Shibumi data. And then what you can do with it is as you get prepared for a briefing meeting, and you want to deliver these slides to those stakeholders, um, rather than having the data live and potentially changing as you're going through the briefing meeting, uh, you can snapshot it and you can lock it in time. And I can look at uh, a previously locked version, and I can see now all of these slides are locked as of the 12th of December. Uh, this is what the the program looked like. Um, and this will never change going forward. This is now locked in time at that date. And so you can create this history uh, of, of decks uh, that span back in time uh, and you can review this. Uh, you can make this available to those, those stakeholders and they can kind of self-serve. They can come in here and they can view this information just directly uh, within Shibumi itself. Or you can download this in you know, PDF form uh, and make it available that way. Um, and then, of course, lastly, just one other thing I'll touch on is, um, you know, we have dashboarding capability just native within Shibumi as well. So you can pretty simply um, make a dashboard available to an executive or a stakeholder or really anybody, uh, any, any uh, type of user in the system. Uh, where they can come and this become this could become you know essentially their home page uh, within Shibumi. And it summarizes all of the information that they care about right here, one-stop shop. You know, I can I could favorite it. Um, and so now it's it's really quickly accessible. Okay, that's what we have for the uh, the presentation for the webinar. Um, we're just up on time. It didn't look like there was that many questions. Um, so that's great. I must have answered everything as I was walking through it. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Um, we are excited for this, this uh, webinar series. Um, look for more in the future. Uh, we will continue to do this. Uh, and any ideas that you have, any suggestions for future topics, we're, we're all ears. We'll, we'd love to hear from, from our customers uh, and partners about that. Uh, and we'll, we'll get it scheduled and, and let you know. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day, evening, afternoon.